Hi everyone, my name is Caroline Erlin Felix. The reason why I'm here today is to share an encounter I had with the Lord. Now, I've had this encounter since 2018, July 27th of 2018, but I was not planning to share it this way. When I initially, you know, had this experience, I thought, I'm going to plan some crusades. I'm going to invite a few persons, speak, uh, speakers, pastors, and have them just, you know, do deliverance and all that. And But then lately, over the past month, the Lord has been urging me to bring forth this message in a video. And for those of you who know me personally, know that speech has not been my strength. Also, I shy away from the spotlight and um, I'm a very private person so this is taking the grace of God the courage of God and dying to myself so let's start with a simple prayer sorry I'm not wearing any makeup I uh, went back to my apostolic roots just for this message I'm gonna cover my head as well Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before your presence to share what is very dear and near to your heart. Lord, I ask right now for your grace to share this message. I ask that your Holy Spirit take over, that you speak through me, O oh God, that your will be done, that they hear the heart of the Father. They hear your love for them, O oh God. They hear your concern. They hear what the message you intended for them to receive. Lord, I pray even as I would begin to share that it would go forth and it would fall on good grounds. And a harvest, O oh God, would spring forth of knowledge and understanding and wisdom, O oh God. And that there would be lives transformed and souls saved because of this message. That people would begin, O oh God, to correct their ways. Father, I ask, O oh God. For divine intervention and revelation, O oh God, and knowledge, O oh God, in the things of you that we would grow together. Even as I share this, as I bring forth this word, O oh God, that you're going to cause there to be clarity in our hearts and in our minds. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for doing it. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for partnering with me in this. And I, I, I give it over unto you, O oh God. I say your will be done, O oh God. Have your way. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the living God. Praise the Lord. Towards the end, I'm going to do like a deliverance prayer. This is just like a simple prayer for starting, turning the whole thing over to the Lord so that he can um, be glorified in this. The week of uh, July 27th, I, uh, I got a call that Monday from an, an American evangelist, a friend of mine who has a very strong prophetic grace. And he told me, you're going to have an encounter from the Lord this week. I needed to actually do two things um, before um, bed at night, do an hour of worship, and also fast all week. So I, I was actually at a conference, attending a conference that week in Tampa, Florida. Um, pastor Rodney Howard Brown was the pastor. It was a fire camp meeting. And those are long services, like five hours long. And so daily I would come home, you know, like around 1.30 in the morning, just tired out. And then I had to just push through with that extra hour of worship because I had been given these instructions. So all week long, I'm expecting every night, Lord, when are you going to show up? That Friday, I, you know, I went um, to the event and I had a very strange experience while I was there. I felt like what came like a warm blanket upon me and it was just fire going through me and it was just, you know, f so fiery yet it wasn't consuming. And it was a time when the pastor wasn't even talking about that. He was just like, doing a casual talk intro, I, I believe. And I just began laughing out loud. And I know the church is kind of known for that. I was like, okay, this is a strange experience, Lord. This is not going to happen to me. There's no way you're going to embarrass me like this. And when I was laughing, I was the only one. And every time I would try to speak, more laughter keep tumbling out. Until like 15 minutes later, I was just laughing nonstop. It was just laughter. Just It was laughing in the Holy Spirit. But that was an experience I, I would say that I've had in, in part during worship, deep worship. I find myself just laughing sometimes. 
and um and so when i got there and had the experience in public it was my first experience and it was a, a more extreme <laughs> experience so i got back um to the hotel and it was around 1 30 a.m as usual and i was like okay lord i'm so tired tonight but i'm going to you know push through again with that, that extra hour of worship and i was done like around 3 a.m i was heading into bed i was just so tired as i lay on the bed i began to doze off and just as i was dozing the lord appeared now i don't know if he came through the door if he just showed up i just saw him standing there in the room and he held out his hand now when i say the lord appeared the lord jesus christ appeared to me now i've heard some experiences where people talk about a, he was like a blinding light they couldn't see his face they couldn't you know i didn't have that experience in fact this was the second time i had seen the lord he allowed me to see him years prior, but not to speak to him. So when I saw him, one, I recognized him because I had seen him in the form that he was when he was on earth. He allowed me to see an experience then. And so he doesn't look, by the way, like any of these portraits or paintings that you see. But when you see him, every cell in your body it recognizes its maker. It's like if they, it's screaming. It's like if it just wants to, to worship, just wants to praise. So I looked at his face and his gaze, his presence was so, uh, I mean, his gaze was just captivating. It was full of love and tenderness. I was just drawn to him. And he took my, me, he took my right hand. And then when I held his hand, I saw the nail pierced through his palm. And I held his hand and he pulled me out of my body. He just pulled me out. It wasn't painful. He just pulled me out of my body and we flew off. And with, I mean, we flew into, I mean, through the roof, I would say, right? But there was no barriers. And then within like a minute or two, we were in Trinidad. Yeah, we are in Trinidad and we went to that area that I, I, um, I lived in before I migrated. And we went to a house of people that I knew. And so we are there suspended, basically. It's a concrete house, but it was like it was glass because we were outside the wall, suspended in the air. The Lord was on my right side. And here it was, we were seeing them in there like, um, like we were standing in there. And I was thinking, why are we here? And it's like almost the Lord he responded right away to my thought and he said it's almost midnight and this is what my people are doing and when he said it there was such pain such hurt mixed with love at the same time he's like it was like despair it's like if you know i shed my blood i did everything that was possible even though he didn't say it it was communicated in his tone in the way he said it and after everything they they are going to perish because they don't realize in this particular um, instance it was a family that actually are uh, considered christian but behind closed doors they were practicing witchcraft and so we moved on to another um home and um this other home we moved on to is people I didn't know. And um, this time we actually walked in to the house through um, the front door. And what was really weird is that the woman held the door open for us and we walked in. Yet she didn't see us. And we got into there and I saw different type of practices. I saw different types of things that are very alarming. I saw all manner of what is considered concupiscence, you know, a strong loss. The experience was about 40 minutes in real time. That's what it felt like. Going from different homes to different homes and seeing these, these different experiences, things that people are doing behind closed doors. People were practicing bestiality. They were, they had, they, they were applying honey to their vaginas, for instance, and having cats and dogs lick it off there's so much things that i saw that i cannot mention in here because i don't want children if they're watching this video overhearing that but there was lots of different uh 
um, practices that from witchcraft to all manner of sexual sins that God was displeased with. And he showed me these things and we just went around and I was just looking. And one of the things I wanted to point out was when he said it's almost midnight at the first experience, the first house we got to, when he said that, I saw this huge cock. It was almost like I could see what he was seeing at the same time. And it appeared to be, and I actually have a clock here to show you. This is what that time appeared to be on the clock. The small hand here, midnight, and the big hand here, approaching midnight. But if you look, it's about two and a half minutes. So when I look at it, I actually said this here just so I can have as an example to show you what it looked like when I saw the clock. It looked like it was two and a half minutes before midnight. Now, the Bible says that a thousand years for man is, a, is a, like a single day for God. I don't know what two and a half minutes equate to, but what I do know, what God was saying is that the term midnight is that we are approaching a season where we are going to begin to go through the tribulation. Revelation chapter 7, see Matthew chapter 24, 29, as well as the great tribulation. It starts subtle and then becomes more overt. It's a warning that we are almost out of time. And so while we still have grace, we still have um, that opportunity to repent and turn to God. It's almost midnight. And I don't want you to forget that clock because what has been happening to me for the past month is that I would be looking at any random stuff and just keep seeing the clock keep appearing, keep appearing, keep appearing. I'm doing it because it's, it's what the Lord would have me to do. The Bible says we perish for, for lack of knowledge. People are perishing. A lot of people are perishing because they are not aware of certain things. Some people don't even realize that certain things that they do are considered to be sin. And I'll give you a few examples. There are people who attend church. You know, they pay their tithes. They give offering. They live to what they consider the best of their knowledge or their ability. But then they miss other things that are so central that even though they were getting answered prayers because God is merciful and gracious and had the presence of the Holy Spirit here, collaborating with them on some things. When they die, they don't make it because they have what is considered things in common with the devil. And so it's now a, a matter of legality because if you have something in common, according to spiritual laws, the devil has a claim to your soul when you die. And if the rapture occurs and you have something in common with the devil, then you cannot rise. It's going to keep you down. So I want to talk to you about what God is concerned about mostly. That's why he shared this experience with me. Of course, it's the sin. It's the, the lifestyle. But what is happening is that there is some things that people are engaged in that they don't realize that is disqualifying them from eternal life. Even though they accepted salvation here for some people. Now, I, I don't want to get into a much biblical um, rhetoric. I just want to share the message. I, wouldn't, I don't want to take up as much time either. Let me just give you an example of a sin that disqualifies them from eternal life. Like, there are folks that are, I mean, subscribe to psychic reading that are involved in fraternities and that it requires that you, you have a vow. You make certain vows and some of these vows are against the word of God when you look at it the terms of it, like for Freemasons have these vows that are against um, uh, the Bible, the Eastern Star, there are many others out there that also have a similar um, disqualification. And I think because we live in an era where there's uncertainty, people are going through different things that they're afraid of. Um, you know, lately the pandemic has a lot of people just scared. People are rushing to the wrong source for help. And this is very damaging. And I'll just go ahead and talk about also the Caribbean aspect of it and then tie it all in and show you why. So on the other hand, we have Native Africans, we have Hispanics, we have Caribbean folks with these sort of you know ancestral backgrounds and practices that was handed down. It's a cultural norm almost that people go, they go and they, let's go for a reading. Let me go for a reading. Let me see what's happening with myself. People have this natural curiosity. They don't have relationship with God. And there's no prophet in the church that is stationed there that they can go and counsel with a lot of them. And so they go to the wrong source. 
You're going to have folks that are in church, going to church, serving God, tithing or giving offering, trying to live right. Yet they go to this person for a reading or to see what's happening with themselves. And they think it's harmless because they didn't do anything bad. At least they think they didn't do anything bad per se because they just went for information. So I would like to bring a correction to that because that's one of the things that was highlighted in my experience or my encounter. What people doesn't realize is that when they go seeking information from a spirit other than the Holy Spirit, that's a form of divination because the spirit involved is an agent of darkness or the person involved is an agent of darkness using a spirit that comes from the kingdom of darkness. And because of it, a covenant is entered into in the realm of the spirit. There are spiritual laws that says, if I go and, and seek counsel from the devil, now he has right or claim on my life, my destiny, and guess what? Instead of going to God, the source, I just committed idolatry. And I think people don't really see that. Yes, people are going through different things in life. And they don't realize that it gets worse. They go in a spiral because it's a system that is set up to keep you bound. So when you go and inquire, what happens? When you give offering and tithes to God, the Bible said when... God rejected Cain's offering. He also rejected him. So two things happen. When God is not pleased with you because you have something in common with the kingdom of darkness by going and inquire there and not him, he considered it like you just went ahead and just signed a, you know, a pact with Satan. Because by doing that, you just sold your kid's destiny, your own destiny. And then you wonder why things are not working or why things are happening the way. And you're crying out to God and God cannot do nothing because he, he said that our traditions have made his word of none effect, have nullified his words. What can he do in the situation when we ourselves look at Joshua? God had said to Joshua after the death of Moses, none shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life, right? I will be with you. And here it is, that's, that's, that's in chapter one. Here it is, chapter seven, he is fleeing, 36 dead you know, Israelite men, and he is fleeing from the people of Ai because there is something in common with the kingdom of darkness in their camp because they had one person that went out and took garments or whatever from um, that God said, do not touch because it was an accursed thing. It's the same thing. Those places are cursed things. These are things you get involved in witchcraft. It's an accursed thing. You seek help from someone who is a diviner. It's an accursed thing. And also, what is something that, that gets missed a lot of times? If there's a prophet like Balaam, that was originally a man of God, but he died in being known as a diviner because of his practice. Because what happened is that he started off right. Whatever he said came to pass, God upheld it. He took a wrong path by trying to curse the people of God. And in so doing, uh, he opened the door for a spirit of divination to operate in him. And what is happening is that he, apart from all of these here as well that I just mentioned, we have prophets that are in the church as well. And they start off right, but along the way, for whatever reason, contaminate the anointing upon their lives and they begin to operate now through a spirit of divination and not even know it. You enter into that sin, the doors open up for the devil to do whatever he likes. And it, it's a similar thing happening here. So when you look at it, in the situation in Trinidad that I had the experience, the concern there was that people are trapped they are becoming ensnared. Their kids are becoming ensnared. The sins of the parents are being visited upon the third and fourth generations. And they don't know why things are happening a certain way. They're praying and they're seeking God. They're crying out to God. And they keep going back to these Obia women and men and pundits and whoever they go to, witches. And, and, and I mean, this happened all over the place. You know, psychic readings, whatever here. But they keep going back. And they don't realize that if they die today without repentance, God doesn't get their soul. 
Sadly, their soul goes to the devil because he already laid claim to it when they went seeking help from him. When they took his advice, Eve took the devil's advice. Adam followed his wife and did the same. And so who you obey, you become servant to. That is something that is very serious because a lot of people are doing it. And in this season, everyone wants to know what's next. What's happening with me? Go to the source. God loves you. The reason why I'm here putting myself, <laughs> putting myself in this video, no makeup even, is because it's his desire that you turn away from those ways, those paths. There are people who have died in your family thinking they're going to make it, but because they went seeking help, didn't come into repentance or ask for forgiveness they, they didn't make it because what gonna happen is when someone dies say they walk up to heaven's gate and there are angels and God there if you get there and you have something that belongs to the devil which reminds me of all these um you know all these weaves and wigs we've been consuming that are cursed because they're coming mostly 95% of them are coming mostly from Hindu temples in India these people are going and giving their hair to their gods, G-O-D-S, to their idols and saying, I have this sickness. I'm giving you my hair because I want this sickness taken from me. And they give their hair to their gods. I have a poverty situation. I have a need. I want my child to, you know, to, to be successful in, in, in education, whatever. And I shave my hair. A monk shaved their hair or the priest or whoever shaved their hair. And they don't, they give that hair attached to a particular thing, attached to a need, attached to a sickness, a, attached to a situation that they want going from them. And here we are as black women. I mean, other races does it too, but mostly black women. Picking up this hair and putting it on our heads. And here we go at the altar, crying out before God at the church, in the altar, in the choir, everywhere. And we are saying, God, why? What is going on? And he looking at us and he's saying, because you have the cursed thing on your head, it limits me from helping you because there are spiritual laws now governing this. And there's an accusation against you in the court of heaven that haven't been settled. My blood haven't been applied to because you haven't come into repentance. And so he has no choice but to reject us and our offering. I've seen a lot. I've seen people having to have their hair cut off with a weave because the, the demons wouldn't leave. Because it's saying, because of this hair, I have a legal right to hold on. I've been to Zimbabwe and seen deliverances like that. Where... That demon would not leave until that hair is cut off, even braids. So, I'm just saying to you all, if the rapture were to occur, and it's going to happen, if the rapture were to occur now, these unrepentant sins from seeking help in the wrong places, these vows we entered into in fraternities and cults and different things, are we going to be taken up? Don't be surprised if you're left behind. Because this is a warning from the Lord. He has done what he needed to do to redeem us to himself. We got an opportunity that the devil didn't get. He rebelled and he was cast out. But God said, as base as we are, made from clay, I'm going to give my life. Because my very breath is in them. My DNA is in them. I'm going to come down and redeem them. So that they have a second chance. A second opportunity. To be reconciled to me. To experience eternal life. And so. Don't trample the, the blood. That was shed of Jesus Christ. That was shed for our salvation. For our sins. What you just heard. You are now being held accountable for the question is what do i have in common with the devil there are some people lives who could have been spared if they only knew what they had in common turn to the source he loves you
he loves you with a love that is so powerful that is so profound that it's even painful like he he allowed me to feel it one time i was having a spiritual a spiritual meltdown and i was like okay lord i, I do not think you love me if you you did you would not allow this to happen to me and i was talking to the lord like that as i opened my mouth again i felt what felt like liquid love being poured into my heart and i literally i, I couldn't even stand I got I, I was laid out on the floor because it was a painful, powerful, extreme love that it was just so I, I couldn't even explain it. The love he has for us. But then we we think that he doesn't care. We think that he doesn't love us. You know what he said in Malachi chapter one? People are complaining, they're saying, How have you loved us? And he said, if I didn't love you, I would lay everything to waste. So we take certain things for granted because the sun shine on all of us and the rain fall on the just and the unjust. And then we think we are master of our own lives and God unto our own self. No, we are his children, his offspring. I'm going to end here. What I was really meaning to do was do a deliverance prayer. But at some point, I would like to do a second video because I realize it's going to take a lot of time because there, there are things that people are struggling with because of these different experiences that require deep deliverance. 